This is the video where I'm going to go over all of the gear changes I made while I was through hiking the AT this year. So the gear that I had when I started in February is very different from the gear I finished the trail with on Katahdin in June. And I'm going to go over what those gear changes are and a little bit about why I made those changes. When I had my gear list right before I started the trail, I thought the gear was perfect. I spent so much time putting that list together and a lot of money buying the gear. And I looked at it, I was like, this is the gear that's going to get me to Katahdin. Why would I change any of it? It works perfect for me. And yeah, that gear probably would have gotten me to Katahdin just fine. But while I was through hiking, I just thought about gear all the time. I love gear. I love thinking about gear and buying gear and trying out new things. So that's what I did. So maybe me talking about these gear changes will help you guys decide what you could take on your through hike and what would work best for you. But this is just my gear and my experience with my gear. So I'm happy to share that information. I'm going to start off talking about my backpacks, which I feel like I talked about my backpacks a lot. So I'll just go over these real quick. I started the trail with the Z-Pax Arc Air 50 and I really loved it. It is a framed backpack. It has these two metal rods in the back that are curved and kind of curve the backpack away from your back. And there's a lot of airflow that goes in. It was really comfortable when I started the trail, but it did get a lot of wear and tear um, pretty fast. Um, the metal rods that arc the backpack away from you would pop out occasionally and every time I would put the metal rods back in they'd pop out easier the next time and I don't know if I was doing it right or wrong but it did get pretty frustrating so I decided to get rid of this backpack and try something else. So I actually ordered the Z-Pax Nero while I was through hiking but when I ordered it I thought it would be my summer backpack after my through hike so when I was doing quick overnight trips in New Hampshire this summer, I thought this would be the backpack I would take. Never thought I would through hike with it, but when the other backpack was frustrating me a lot, I decided to give this one a go. It's really lightweight, it's like 10 ounces, it's only 38 liters, but at that point my gear was narrowed down and it did fit in this. Um, but the only problem is it's not rated to carry the amount of weight that I was putting in it. So my base weight was probably like 13 pounds and this is rated for like a five pound base weight so it was a really cool backpack but it wasn't comfortable all the time so i ended up getting rid of this too so this is the brand new backpack i got and what i finished the trail with it's the hyperlite junction 2400 and i didn't get this until maine but i really wish i had this for more of my through hike because it's lightweight, not as lightweight as the other two options, but it carries the gear and the weight so comfortably. And just the back, I really loved. I thought it has an internal frame. You don't see any of the metal rods or that stuff on the outside. I think it's on the inside, but just like the really thick hip belt and like waist part of this was really comfortable. The straps were comfortable and it just fit my body really well and carried my gear comfortably but yeah all three backpacks kind of have the same style they're really minimal lightweight and have like the big mesh pocket on the front so that's the kind of style I like but this was just the most comfortable next gear change that I made that was probably the most asked about because I don't think I ever really explained it in a trail vlog and that's my tent so I started the trail with the z-pax duplex it's right here it is an extremely lightweight two-person tent that uses trekking poles to set it up so you don't have to carry tent poles which makes it really light and it's a single wall tent so it doesn't have a separate rain fly and I really loved it because I was good at setting it up it was really lightweight it was really simple and I had it for about half of my through hike and I ended up switching it's in the bag right now I switched to the Big Agnes Tigerwall UL2. So the reason I did this is because I already had the Big Agnes tent at home and I never used it. It's very different. It is a, well, it's still a two person tent. It's not as lightweight. So this definitely weighs more and it has tent poles to set it up and it has a separate rain fly. 
So it's like the opposite of the duplex. So because this has tent poles, it is a semi-freestanding tent, whereas the duplex is a non-freestanding tent or a tension tent because you need the trekking poles and you need to stick it out into the ground in order to set it up. And the reason why I made this switch is because of the tent stakes. So by the time I got to Pennsylvania, the terrain was so rocky. And when I was setting up the duplex, I was getting so frustrated trying to tent or get the tent stakes into the ground with all the rocks. And I wasn't able to set it up as fast and as easy as I was in the beginning when the ground was a lot more smoother and rock free. Um, so I, in that moment of like frustration, I was like, okay, my mom's going to visit in a couple weeks. I want her to bring my semi freestanding tent because I want some experience with that tent and I don't want to have to worry about getting the tent stakes in the rocks. And also because I'm familiar with hiking in New England, I know how many campsites here have those wooden tent platforms and I love the platforms. They're so convenient to set your tent up and it's just really nice to not be on the ground. Um, and with semi freestanding tents, it is so much easier to get these tents set up on the platform because you don't need to stake it into the ground in order to have it up. So those are the two reasons. Um, the terrain was getting rockier and I wanted to set my tent up on the wooden platforms. And I know it's possible to set up the duplex on the tent platforms, Cody did it, but I just wanted things to go as easy, smooth, and fast as I can because I get so tired and sometimes grumpy at the end of a long hiking day. The next gear change I made is my sleeping pad. So I started the trail with this inflatable sleeping pad from Thermarest, it's the Neo Air X Lite. And I started with this because it's really comfortable, but it's also warm. So starting in February, I needed a sleeping pad with a good R value. And this is lightweight for what you get out of it. Um, when it was warming up, I wanted to try this sleeping pad, which is just a foam pad. Um, I just wanted experience on it. Again, I had this at home, but never really used it much. And I wanted to see if I could have a good night's sleep with a foam pad. So. My mom visited, I swapped this out for one night when she was there. I tested it out, had a good night's sleep, so I kept using it. I also really liked the foam pad because it was really fast setting it up. You didn't have to blow it up. Um, you could just kind of like open it up and lay it in the tent. And also it was a really good sit pad for breaks. Um, if you wanted to lay down in the middle of the day, you can take a little dirt nap on this and it was just really convenient and I didn't have to sacrifice that much comfort for this because I was still sleeping well. Um, but I did end up switching back to the inflatable pad um, later on in my hike, not because the foam pad didn't work out, but because when I got the new backpack, when I got the Z-Pax Nero, it didn't have the kind of attachment at the bottom to hold the foam pad like my last backpack did. I kind of added this temporarily right now to see if I could do it, but I was carrying the foam pad underneath my backpack and that's how I liked carrying it. And I just couldn't do that with my new backpack. So I had my mom give me this back cause it can just go in inside the backpack and it was easier to carry. The next gear change I made was pretty early on in my hike. I was still in North Carolina, but I kind of knew this one was coming and it's my stove. I started the trail with this jet boil. It's pretty big, bulky, kind of heavy, but it was recommended by a friend. And I also thought this was a really good choice for beginners. So I've never really done anything with fuel or cooking in the back country. And that made me nervous. Even just like lighting a stove with a lighter, I didn't like the idea of. And with this one, you didn't need a lighter. It just kind of had a button. It turned on, had this cozy built into it. Um, I know a lot of hikers were making their own co koozies. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that, but I just thought this was like a really good beginner all in one stove and it worked out great. But once I got really familiar with this, I thought I could upgrade to like one of the more classic backpacking stoves. On the same time I started the trail, Jetboil came out with a new product and it's the Jetboil stash. So it's lighter weight. It doesn't have that koozie. It doesn't have all the fancy things, the bells and whistles that this one does. It's 
definitely more basic. So it's more lightweight, it takes up less space, and it was a little expensive, like maybe $120, but I thought this was a great choice for me. And I used it the rest of the through hike and loved it, never had any issues. Just a reminder, I will link everything I'm talking about in the description. So if you wanted to check it out and read more about it and see the weights of things and the prices of things, you can open up the description and click the links and learn more. So nothing's sponsored in this video. This is just what I used. Next gear change I definitely expected to happen because obviously the weather warms up between February and June. So that's my sleep clothes. I started the trail with really heavy weight, smart wool, 250 base layer, like the warmest sleep clothes I could probably find on, I think I got these on backcountry.com. And you pack your fears when you're getting ready for a through hike. And I absolutely did not want to be cold when I slept. So I had very heavy sleep clothes. So once I felt more comfortable sleeping um, in warmer weather, I swapped it out for a much lightweight option. Um, these were pants from Eastern Mountain Sports, just like really lightweight polyester pants and just a really light long sleeve shirt from Virgin Outdoors, which is a company from Lincoln, New Hampshire. So it's nice and local. While we're on the topic of clothing, there's a couple more changes I made to that system along the way. And one is my hiking shirt. So I started the trail with a shirt from my gift shop. It's kind of like an athletic moisture wicking t-shirt. It said New Hampshire across it. I thought it was really cool, but I did want to upgrade to something that was actually meant for hiking and long distance backpacking. So I picked this up at Cabela's. It's a Columbia shirt. I really wanted like the button up, the more breathability and I more, more than anything, I wanted a tank top because I had a wedding in a week and I wanted to get rid of my um, sleeve farmer's tan line. So I switched to this and absolutely loved it and then hiked the rest of the trail in this tank top. I am absolutely loving this new shirt I have on today. And a big gear change I made, I kind of forgot because it happened at mile 30 of my through hike. So this was like a really long time ago, but I swapped out my shoes. I started with Ultra Lone Peaks and I had some foot issues, not quite sure, never really figured out if they were related to my shoe, but I did switch at Mountain Crossings. I tried on a couple different shoes and found that the Saucony Peregrine 11s were the most comfortable for me. So I switched to the Sauconys at mile 30 and continued the rest of the trail with that brand and model of shoe, but I did go through four pairs of four pairs of that same shoe. So I kept reordering them off of Amazon. This next gear change might seem small to you, but it played a big role in my hike. Um, it saved me from a lot of pain and that's powder. So the gold bond powder, which I started the trail with, I don't have a bottle with me because I don't use it anymore. I'd use it to prevent chafing. Um, I'll put a picture of what I used right here. So you know what I'm talking about, but I think there was a place where I couldn't find that and I just picked up normal baby powder and that worked so much better. It was just more soothing and felt nicer. And this is what I have. I have a big bottle right here. I'd get a big bottle and just kind of pour it into the travel size ones, but this was just so much nicer. It worked so much better. So I'm not using gold bond powder anymore. I'm just using like the Johnson's. So I always line my backpack with a pack liner and that's just to prevent water from getting on anything that you don't want to get wet in bad weather. I started the trail with just a clear bag, a plastic bag from Gossamer Gear. It was really cheap. It's kind of like, I don't know, a Ziploc bag material. It's nicer than like a trash bag, but not as nice as like an actual bag <laughs> that you get from a company um, like this. <laughs> this is what I actually ended up picking up later on in my hike in New England. It's just a pack liner from Osprey. And I switched to this just for the durability. Um, I sometimes when I had my pack liner and I'd roll it up and like compress all the air out, my thumb, if like I pressed too hard, my thumb could just like go through the plastic bag. And that happened a couple of times. And once you get a hole in your pack liner, it's kind of not worth it anymore. It doesn't work. So there's no way that you can like when you're compressing this in your bag that you can like poke a hole through it. So I switched to this. It's a little bit heavier, but it is safer. 
Also swapped out my rain pants on my through hike. I started with these kind of like heavy duty REI rain pants. And I really like starting with these because not only is it gonna protect you from rain, but like cold and wind. And again, I was nervous being cold starting in February. So I really liked this like heavy layer. And I thought I would be hiking through snow because if you start in February, there's a good chance that you will experience snow. And there were hikers that started like a week or two um, before me and they had like three feet of snow in the Smokies. So if you're gonna be hiking through snow, you definitely wanna protect yourself um, as much as you can. So I started with these, but I didn't experience snow or like rain that bad. So I think I got rid of these for a little bit and I eventually switched to these rain pants from z -Packs. They are super expensive, but they are also super lightweight. And to be honest, I picked these up in New England and actually never wore them because by the time I was up there, it was so warm that when it did rain, I'd usually just wear my shorts and just let them get wet um, because I wasn't ever cold when it rained. So I always had these in my pack just in case. I think I wore them like a couple times around camp to just kind of like keep the warmth in when the sun went down. But yeah, I can't really review these because I didn't use them that much and I never use them in rain. So it saved a lot of weight, but I guess I, I didn't need them. Back to clothing for a little bit because I forgot about this. This is my melons on a hoodie and I started the trail with this and it was good um, when it got really cold in the beginning, but it warmed up really fast and I ended up getting rid of this in Pennsylvania because I found myself every time I was getting cold, I was just putting my puffy jacket on and I wasn't using this as much as I thought I would. Um, I did get rid of the Melanzana, but I also picked up this hoodie, um, which is much lighter weight. I thought it was better for the summer. It does block the sun, so I think like UPF blocking, I don't know the technical word, but when I wore this, when it was like really hot and sunny, I didn't get too overheated. So I really liked this and it was just a nice hoodie to have kind of like in town and at camp. And it was just a lot more comfortable in the warmer months than the Melanzana was. So I got rid of the Melly, but I did switch to this and I really liked it. And because I switched to this, I also got rid of that long sleeve black hiking shirt. So I swapped out two pieces of gear for this one piece of gear, which saved weight. And that's always a good thing. The next piece of gear is pretty minor, but it's my earbuds. I started with the Galaxy earbuds. And I picked those because I have a Galaxy phone and thought they would work really well together. But Jaybird reached out and asked if I wanted to try out their new Vista 2 earbuds. And I agreed and I ended up loving them and I ended up doing some sponsored content for them and thought they were really great. So, so I did pick up this fanny pack during my through hike. And that's mostly because when I had my Nero, it didn't come with hip belt pockets and I need to be able to access my snacks while I'm hiking without taking my backpack off. So I got this to hold my snacks and a couple little things like my earbuds and my headlamp. So it's really convenient, but then when I got the Hyperlite, I got my pockets back and I ditched this. And that's all the major gear changes I could think of that I made while I was through hiking the AT this year. I hope this answered some of your questions that you might've had or maybe helped you make a decision on what you want to take on a future backpacking trip. So I'll leave it at that. I don't want this video to get too long. Again, links for everything are in the description of this video. There are a couple more gear videos I want to make about what I used on the AT. Um, so I have a couple in mind, but if you have any specific suggestions, leave those in the comments and hope you enjoyed. Um, it's my birthday, so I'm going to go and do some celebrating and have a good day. Bye.